Thank you, Mr. Owori, for sharing those opening remarks. You have highlighted how growth in Sub-Saharan Africa is still on an upward trend despite the headwinds, uh, with many TDB member states doubling down on domestic production of critical agri-commodities such as wheat and local industrial production. You also highlighted the real risk that we face in Africa if we don't take climate risk seriously and address it urgently, as the bill for adaptation is likely to be much more than we can bear. This requires disciplined leadership, strong institutions, and smart partnerships that balance short-term needs and long-term imperatives. You also drew our attention to the dire need for stronger capital flows in our region and how TDB is leading by example through offering investors a unique opportunity to take up TDB Class C development shares with each $1 invested in such TDB Class C development shares being leveraged four times towards sustainable and green financing initiatives. Thank you again, my CEO. As mentioned, this forum is the fruit of a strong partnership between TDB and EIB. The European Investment Bank is the lending arm of the European Union. It is a leading multilateral financial institution globally and one of the largest providers of climate finance worldwide. Accordingly, I am honored to invite to the podium Mr. Paolo Lombardo, Head of Regional Representation for the EIB, to share some thoughts as he introduces the EIB Vice President, Mr. Thomas Ostros. Welcome, Mr. Lombardo. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, James. Actually, I will leave my thoughts for tomorrow while I have a, a dedicated session on uh, entirely to me in the early in the morning. Dear officials, uh, dear Michael, uh, colleagues of the Trade uh, Development Bank, dear partners, dear EB colleagues who put this together with uh, colleagues from TDB, dear participants, guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me join Michael in welcoming you to uh, this fifth edition of the Banking Forum for East Africa, which has been uh, supported by EIB uh, for, uh, for now five editions. I have the privilege of introducing now a, um, a speech by our Vice President Ostros. Vice President Ostros is a former uh, finance minister of Sweden, and he has oversight over EIB's uh, development finance activities outside, outside Europe. Mr. Ostros has taken a particular interest in development finance over, over his tenure in EIB and has been visiting um, Africa on, on many occasions. He regrets not being here today. His plan worked for him to be here physically, Unfortunately, uh, this has not been a particularly easy year for, for Europe, as you will know, and the IB has been particularly active in, in supporting a, uh, Ukraine. So these months have been particularly intense for us in terms of coming up with support facilities for Ukraine, but also other parts of the world that require EIB enhanced support. So I have now the uh, honor to pass the floor to uh, Vice President Ostros, whose speech has been recorded in advance of this uh, meeting. Thank you. Mr. Admasu Tadesse, President and Group MD, Trade and Development Bank, Ambassador Henriette Geiger, Head of EU Delegation in Kenya, Mr. Tobias Rasmussen, IMF Representative in Kenya, ladies and gentlemen, partners and friends from Kenya and from across Eastern Africa. Good morning from Luxembourg. As uh, Vice President of the European Investment Bank, allow me to warmly welcome you all to the joint EIB TDB East Africa SME Banking and Microfinance Forum 2022. And apologies for not being able to join you in person. After two years of physical absence due to the COVID restrictions, this year's Eastern Africa SME Banking and Microfinance Forum, co-organized with our long-standing partners, Trade and Development Bank, will be the fifth event which we are co-hosting. Today, we expect to have more than 110 financial professionals attending physically and many more attending virtually from partner financial institutions and associations. 
we are all coming together to deliver the same goal and long-term objective. That is strengthening the banking sector resilience and unlocking economic opportunities for entrepreneurs across Eastern Africa. The huge success of our previous SME banking and microfinance academies in West, East Africa and Southern Africa has provided a platform for shared best practice with more than 5,000 African financial professionals for the benefit of many more entrepreneurs. Under this year's theme, Financing for Sustainable Development, a response to the challenges of climate change, we aim to disseminate climate risk awareness, advocate climate action, strengthen skills and spread best banking practices in order to build a greener and more resilient banking sector across Eastern Africa. Our valuable collective experience with partners like TDB will further strengthen access to finance and unlock high impact investments to tackle climate change mitigation and adaption. In addition, it will address social challenges, improve access to finance for women and harness the huge potential of innovation and digital technology. As EIB, we pride ourselves in being a front runner in the pursuit of climate action by transforming ourselves into the climate bank of the European Union. This transformation, which started when we pioneered the green bond market 15 years ago and by the climate commitment we made in 2010, has gone faster than anyone could have expected, leading us to become one of the world's largest climate financiers. During the recent COP27, multilateral development banks had a particularly important role to play. In 2021, MDBs offered some 82 billion US dollars for climate action and made a globally collective commitment to support countries in addressing their most urgent development climate challenges. The EIB, which in 2021 provided a total of 27.6 billion euros for climate action and environmental sustainability projects, aims to support its clients so that they better understand climate risks and build resilient, low carbon and inclusive infrastructure, cities and businesses. We are helping countries make the most of the economic opportunities this transition brings. And we are increasingly supporting efforts that address the climate crisis with a growing focus also on nature and biodiversity loss. Ladies and gentlemen, over the last two years, Africa and Europe have faced unprecedented challenges triggered by the global COVID-19 pandemic. The AB is uh, pleased to have been able to work with partners across the African continent to strengthen joint responses since the first week of the COVID crisis. When the COVID pandemic struck, the EIB provided more than 3.6 billion euros for new private sector investment across Africa to enhance economic resilience to COVID-19. And we are working with nearly 100 financial partners across Africa to provide long-term backing for high-impact local investment. This engagement has been renewed since Russia's brutal invasion of Ukraine in February, triggered further economic, trade, energy and cost of living challenges in Africa and around the world. The EIB is already working with partners across Africa and around the world to support business sectors, in particular energy and food security, adversely impacted by the war. Over the years, more than a third of EIB financing across Africa has backed business investment both through credit lines with banking and microfinance partners, private equity funds, and also with direct corporate financing. For example, in 2021, EIB signed lines of credit with Bank of Kigali for 40 million euros, Development Bank of Rwanda for 15 million euros, and BPR Bank Rwanda for 15 million euros. These were under our regional East Africa financing facility to support SMEs and mid-caps. Two of these credit lines not only spur job creation, but also have a gender angle to support women economic empowerment under our She Invest program. And two benefit from our dedicated technical assistance program for banks known as the Africa Women Rising Initiative. Besides, as part of the Kenya Team Europe COVID-19 response access to finance, a 50 million euro line of credit blended with an EU grant was signed with the Co-op Bank of Kenya, the third largest bank in Kenya and the largest cooperative bank in Africa, 
to own land to private sector entities, especially SMEs. Furthermore, 81.5 million euros credit line was signed in 2021 with our partner TDB to own land to private enterprises. This facility represents a pilot project in, in which at least 15% of the loan amount will be allocated to private enterprises supporting peace positive investments under a fragile context window. Good momentum is being maintained in the region this year with possible new corporations in the region for 200 million US dollars. They are to support working capital and investment needs of small and medium-sized enterprises and mid-caps, including trade finance. 2022 also marks the resumption of our activities in Tanzania after a long absence since 2017, with the approval of a 350 million euro finance facility available to a number of commercial banks for own lending to eligible SMEs, mid-caps and cooperatives. This umbrella facility is expected to be blended with grants from the EC African Investment Platform to improve access to credit and tailor loan terms to the specificities of the targeted women-led businesses and the blue economy sectors. The first credit lines under this facility are expected to be signed during the first half of 2023. The EIB also engages with microfinance providers in East Africa to support them to increase the outreach to micro-entrepreneurs and improve access to finance for vulnerable groups, women, youth, refugees, migrants and people from rural areas, plus smallholder farmers and agri-food companies. With this in mind, a dedicated facility was launched in 2014, where, Bri where Pride Microfinance Limited and Centenary Bank in Uganda are already beneficiaries. Our aim is to offer a holistic approach for the development of the microfinance sector by providing a broad range of support. Direct funding for microfinance institutions and local banks, strengthening of the MFI's capital base through investments in microfinance funds, risk sharing for selected portfolios with particularly high impact, technical assistance to our partners and clients. Indeed, by offering specialized technical assistance and fostering closer cooperations with partners like the TDB, the EIB aims to contribute towards a lasting legacy of building local capacity and even developing stronger technical skills to enhance financial inclusion. Recognizing the importance of ensuring that private sector financing unlocks sustainable economics and social development, we stand ready to join other development institutions in their effort to promote private sector development, economic growth, climate action, and environmental sustainability across Eastern Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, earlier this year, in line with the overall reform of EU's global activities and following the request by the European Council, we embarked on a process to reform EIB's activities outside the European Union, and we established a specialized development, development finance arm, EIB Global. It is EIB Global's mission to further strengthen our global partnerships in support of global objectives shared by the European Union and by its African partners. EIB Global has been set up to increase the impact of our financing. We strongly believe that this will increase our value as a partner, including as a key partner for private sector investments in Africa. As a first step of an evolving business model for higher impact, we are expanding our local presence around the world. We already have 30 offices worldwide beyond the borders of the European Union, including nine across Africa. We plan to add many others housed within the EU delegations wherever possible, as is already the practice. Allow me to conclude by thanking Mr. Admasso Tadesse, the team led by James Kabuga, and all our TDB colleagues and friends for their excellent cooperation in the preparation of this banking and microfinance forum and to the head of the EU delegation in Nairobi, Ambassador Henriette Geiger, the EMF, uh, IMF Kenya representative, Tobias Rasmussen, for joining us over the next two days. Bringing banking and microfinance stakeholders together virtually makes it easier and allows many more to participate. But nothing can replace the value of meeting partners face to face and being able to exchange views, work together, act together, 
and deliver impact together as partners to improve the lives and livelihoods of East Africans, particularly during these troubled times. Many thanks for your participation. I wish you all a productive and enjoyable SME Banking and Microfinance Forum. Thank you for your attention.